Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and module number three on reactive chemistry. This is video 19 and it's the last in our little mini series in looking at electronegativity trends this time <coughs> as part of the look at different physical properties and their relationship to the different types of metals. So to do something a little bit different, let's just snitch one of these tables from uh, Pearson, our textbook, and have a look at a little bit of summary um, at more of a closer snapshot of some of these metals. When we look at each of these, there's a couple of things that we can notice. First of all, um, sodium, magnesium, and aluminium are all in the same period. They're in period three. As we go across this period, sodium forms a 1 plus ion, magnesium forms a 2 plus ion, aluminium forms a 3 plus ion. We know that the first ionization energy, um, which, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, which effectively is here, increases as we go across the uh, period. So uh, much easier to remove an electron from sodium, making it the most active. Uh, not so easy to remove from aluminium. Now, still a fairly reactive metal, but just not as reactive as sodium. We also looked at the trend in atomic radius. And again, you can see as we go along this period, the atomic radius is getting smaller. So there's no change in the outer shell electrons. They're all in the same valence shell, just either one, two, or three electrons in the valence shell. But the extra proton in the nucleus is drawing each of these uh, electrons in just a little bit closer and squeezing the atom a little bit tighter. So therefore, the radius is just a little bit smaller as we grow across the period. The other trend which we haven't looked at in separate videos, but we can uh, quickly look at now, and it does the same sorts of things as we've seen, is you'll notice that electronegativity uh, is increasing as we go across the period. Now, electronegativity is the ability of the atom to attract, basically attract and capture an electron. Think about electronegativity as the ability to take an electron and become negatively charged. Now, one thing we know about um, uh, about metals is that they are cations. That is, they form positive ions, not negative ions. So they do not have a very good ability to attract electrons and form negative ions. Um, aluminiums is better than magnesiums, which is in turn better than sodiums, but none of them are particularly good. Electronegativity is a good measure of the ionic nature of different bonds. The difference between those two tells us something about whether substances are bonded covalently or ionically. And the very low values for most of these metals indicates that they are more likely to form ionic compounds when they are combined with nonmetals, which all have much higher generally speaking, electronegativity values. So the last three videos really have just been about trying to get you to think about some of the trends that we've looked at in previous topics, such as ionization energy, atomic radius, and electronegativity, and see how they relate to our knowledge about metals. The key thing about these metals is that all of these metals uh, if you look at the ionization equation, for example, aluminium solid becomes aluminium ions 3 plus with three electrons. And this, because it is a loss of electrons, is an oxidation. So what we're seeing is all of these metals are all readily oxidized to different extents on the basis of the um, number of electrons that they have in the outer shell, the ability of the uh, nucleus to attract electrons, and more importantly, the amount of energy that's required in order for one of those outer shell electrons, those valence shell electrons to be removed, and for the uh, 
uh, atom itself to form ions. Notice too that in the trend uh, relating to ionization energy, what we have is just the one, so it would be a first ionization energy for sodium. The second one would be two, so the first and the second ionization energies added together is the total that we need uh, in order to remove the two electrons from magnesium. And you notice that um, uh, even if we halve these two values, they're both significantly higher than the single one for sodium. But uh, one thing we haven't talked about and we won't talk about too much is the fact that once you have removed one electron, you now already have an ion. So removing a second electron is often a lot more difficult and especially the case for um, aluminium when we have to take the first, the second and the third electron and hence that's why those values are much higher. So just qualifying that in case I wasn't very clear early on. Look, review these trends, um, work out some of the acetate sheets that you can overlay over your periodic table to um, visualize these trends and hopefully they'll help you to understand exactly what's going on with each of these metals. Thanks for watching.